We live our lives on the surface of a small blue world sheltered by a thin veil of atmosphere. We feel the wind on our skin, see the clouds gather before a storm, and measure the rain as it falls. These are the elements of weather we understand, the familiar forces that shape our days and seasons. But there is another kind of weather, a far grander and more powerful system of storms that rages not in our skies, but across the vast emptiness of space. It is a weather driven by a star, our sun, and its invisible currents wash over our planet every second of every day, largely unnoticed. These are not storms of wind and rain, but of energy and plasma, a silent ceaseless tempest in the void. These cosmic forces are the ghost in the machine of our solar system. They are the unseen hands that can paint the polar skies with impossible colors, yet also threaten to scramble the delicate electronics that underpin our modern civilization. We cannot feel this weather in the traditional sense. So, what exactly is this invisible storm? At its heart, space weather is the constant stream of particles and energy flowing from the sun and its interaction with everything in its path, including our planet. Imagine the sun not just as a source of light and heat but as a colossal fountain continuously spraying the solar system with a fine mist. This mist isn't water it's something far more exotic called plasma. Plasma is the fourth state of matter, a superheated gas where atoms have been torn apart into a sea of charged particles, protons and electrons. This outflow is called the solar wind. This solar wind blows constantly, a perpetual breeze traveling at hundreds of kilometers per second. It fills the entire solar system, a tenuous but persistent medium that presses against planets, moons, comets. On a calm day, the solar wind is relatively gentle, a steady stream flowing outwards from the sun's corona. But the sun is a dynamic variable star, it has moods, it has seasons of activity, a cycle of roughly 11 years where it transitions from a state of relative calm to a period of intense violent outbursts. Think of it like the ocean. To understand the tempests of space weather, we must look to their source, the sun itself. Our star may appear as a serene, unchanging orb in the sky, but up close it's a maelstrom of violent activity. The sun's immense magnetic fields are constantly twisting, stretching, snapping like cosmic rubber bands. When these magnetic field lines become too tangled, they can suddenly reorganize into a simpler configuration, releasing an astonishing amount of energy. This sudden brilliant flash of light and radiation is known as a solar flare. It is one of the most explosive events in our solar system. A solar flare is like a bolt of lightning, but on a scale that dwarfs anything on Earth. A large flare can release the energy of billions of nuclear bombs in minutes. This energy travels outwards at the speed of light, bathing the solar system in intense X-rays and ultraviolet radiation. If a flare is aimed at Earth, this radiation can reach us in just over 8 minutes. It doesn't reach the ground to harm us directly, but it can disrupt the ionosphere. Our planet is not defenseless against the sun's relentless onslaught. Our planet is not defenseless against the sun's relentless onslaught. Deep within the Earth's core, the motion of molten iron generates a powerful magnetic field, an invisible force field that extends tens of thousands of kilometers into space. This shield is called the magnetosphere. It is our planet's first and most important line of defense against the solar wind and CMEs. Without it, the solar wind would strip away our atmosphere over millions of years, leaving Earth a barren, lifeless rock much like Mars. The magnetosphere deflects the constant stream of charged particles, guiding them around our planet as water flows around a stone in a river. The shape of the magnetosphere is not a perfect sphere. On the side facing the sun, the solar wind compresses it, creating a curved boundary known as the bow shock. On the night side, the solar wind stretches the magnetic field lines out into a long trailing tail, much like the tail of a comet, extending for millions of kilometers. This entire structure is dynamic, constantly pulsating and shifting in response to the changing pressure of the solar wind. It shimmers, it ripples, and it bends. When a CME successfully breaches our magnetic defenses and pours energy into the magnetosphere, it triggers what we call a geomagnetic storm. This is the main event of a space weather disturbance. A geomagnetic storm is a major temporary disturbance of Earth's magnetosphere. The planet's magnetic field, normally stable, begins to fluctuate wildly. Compasses on the ground might twitch. Systems that rely on the stability of the magnetic field. Systems that rely on the quiet of the upper atmosphere. The injected energy doesn't just vanish. It drives powerful electrical currents in space. It drives powerful electrical currents in the upper atmosphere. One of these is the ring current, an enormous circuit around Earth. 
During a storm, the ring current intensifies dramatically. Its field opposes Earth's field. That causes the planet's surface field strength to decrease. Scientists measure that fluctuation with the KP index. A severe storm makes the magnetic environment unstable and unpredictable. Energetic particles heat and expand the upper atmosphere. Satellites in low Earth orbit suddenly face thicker air. Amidst the potential risks and disruptions of a geomagnetic storm lies one of the most sublime and beautiful spectacles in nature, the aurora. The northern lights are the visible manifestation of a solar storm. The southern lights are the visible manifestation of a solar storm, a direct link between the turmoil on the sun and a breathtaking light show in our sky. They are not just pretty lights, they are the result of a fundamental physical process. The aurora is the exhaust pipe of a geomagnetic storm, safely venting the immense energy that has been injected into our planet's magnetic system. The magic begins when the energetic particles, the electrons and protons from the solar wind and the magnetotail, are funneled down along Earth's magnetic field lines towards the polar regions. And as they plunge into the upper atmosphere, they collide with atoms and molecules of gas, primarily oxygen and nitrogen. For most of human history a geomagnetic storm was little more than a curiosity, a source of spectacular auroral displays. But in the 21st century, we have wrapped our planet in a delicate, invisible web of technology that is uniquely vulnerable to the whims of the sun. Our reliance on this technology has grown so profoundly that a severe space weather event is no longer just a scientific curiosity, it is a significant threat to our economic stability and national security. We have, in a sense, built a glass house in the path of a cosmic hurricane, and we are only now beginning to fully appreciate its fragility. Our constellation of satellites is on the front line. We rely on them for everything. Global positioning system navigation for our cars and planes, global communications for our phones and internet weather forecasting financial transactions military surveillance. During a geomagnetic storm, the signals from GPS satellites must travel through a disturbed and fluctuating ionosphere. This can introduce errors in timing and positioning, rendering the system unreliable just when it might be needed most. The direct bombardment of satellites by energetic particles can cause permanent damage to solar panels and internal circuitry, effectively killing a billion-dollar piece of infrastructure with an invisible salvo. On the ground, the threat to electrical grids remains one of the most serious concerns. The geomagnetically induced currents are a silent menace, a form of direct current flowing into a system designed for alternating current. To understand the true potential of a severe space weather event, we must look to the past. In September 1859, the most powerful geomagnetic storm ever recorded struck the Earth. It's called the Carrington Event, named after British astronomer Richard Carrington who observed the enormous solar flare. Auroras were seen all over the world. In the Rocky Mountains people reportedly woke up and started making breakfast, thinking it was dawn. The celestial lights were visible as far south as Cuba, and as far south as Tahiti. At the time, the world's most advanced technology was the telegraph system. The Carrington event wreaked havoc on the telegraph networks. Operators were shocked by geomagnetically induced currents. Telegraph paper caught fire. In some cases messages were sent even after systems were disconnected. Now imagine a Carrington magnitude storm striking Earth today. The consequences would be catastrophic. A National Academy of Sciences report estimates blackouts affecting more than 130 million people in the United States alone. The study of space weather forces us to confront a fundamental truth about our existence. We live in a cosmic firing line. Our planet is a beautiful, resilient world, but it is not isolated from the wider universe. We are inextricably linked to our star, the Sun, in a relationship of both life-giving dependence and potential peril. For too long we have gone about our lives with our heads down, building our intricate technological society with little regard for the stellar storms that rage above. Understanding space weather is an act of planetary self-awareness. It is about understanding the environment in which we live, not just on Earth, but within the solar system. This knowledge is not meant to inspire fear, but rather to foster respect and drive preparation. By studying the sun and tracking its activity, we can build better forecasts. Agencies like NASA and NOAA operate a fleet of solar observatories, our celestial weather stations, that provide us with advance warning of incoming coronal mass ejections.